All right, welcome back. If you just joined us, you've not really missed much, but I must say kudos to my producer, Tayo, for those shots of the week. And on that note, let me welcome baby of the house, Olichi Tobek Sovichibu. Olichi, you're welcome. Thank you so much, George. Um, it's good to be here. A pure Sunday to our viewers at home. I know what I mean if I say pure, and I also know Tony understands. Why are you looking at Tony and talking about pure? Let me come to Tony anyway. Tony, I don't know what Olichi means, pure Sunday, and he, she's looking at you. It's a Sunday, and uh, <laughs> definitely Sunday remains a holy day. Okay. In a day that God himself rested, and a day that so many of our viewers are resting and watching us. It is indeed pure, okay. except you have any other thing in mind. Just no, like, no, was just looking like at you. you are trying to, you know, just, uh, you know, <laughs> hit, uh, hit we'll our people. <laughs> 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 okay, before we go to what happened in Abba and uh, the Columbia boys, uh, in their home, actually, uh, the Columbia boys, we'll talk about that in the NPFL, but let's start as usual with top news and let's go to Oma West where it is happening, the uh, cycling. And uh, I must tell you that Frank Laboya, the chairman of Oma West, has been promoting cycling. And the good thing is that he's not getting corporate support. Don't forget that uh, Max V. Is going to power the Onwa West cycling that will be coming on February 29th. Saturday, I must tell you to be precise. And uh, interestingly, the coach of Edo, Bello, or uh, after the Edo Sports Festival, said Edo will win this one. That his cyclist performed optimally well during the State Sports Festival and that they will do the six states that will be coming to Uzeba for the February 29th uh, uh, Onwa West cycling. Uh, meet. So, that's a good one coming from Ongwa West. We are warming up. We'll be there and the Tony will be warming up to go and eat monkey meat in Ozeba. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know about uh, the monkey meat in Ozeba, but I do know you know, uh, during uh, the festival in Edo State, there will be all kinds of meat. But importantly is the fact that uh, the chairman of Ongwa West, you know, a very energetic uh, chairman. Frankie Laboya. A very energetic <laughs> chairman of <laughs> Uh, Sportsville and indeed that of uh, former chairman of a do football association Frank Elabo has proved beyond his never doubt you know that sportsmen indeed you know will always shine wherever they are and he's glittering you know in the local government and he has shown his power his knowledge you know when he came second in the Edo sports festival you know that just passed by and uh, also bringing a lot of uh, innovations and bringing sponsorship to bear in a do state in terms of uh, promoting cycling that's exactly what is going to take us there to you know witness you know the cyclists who are going to make history courtesy of uh, frank elaboya and uh, of course uh, his friend uh, masby yeah. in cycling no, i, I think like uh, george there is no other thing anybody can say other than to say congratulations to frank elaboya and indeed to a do state government for discovering this hidden star that has been doing a wonderful job in the state. Yes, so Frankie Laboya has been a wonderful job right from his days as FA chairman. When he went home, I remember the governor asked him one day, say, Frank, do you want to do politics or sports? Tony, you remember? Yes, I do. And I think Obaseki is proud of Frank today because he's combining both very well. Yeah, you know who Frank <laughs> is. In anything that he does, he will always tell you, mark my words. Mark my words. I will excel. Okay. <laughs> Frank, mark our words. We are coming to our words to come and celebrate with you as you try to empower the youth of our West local government. Still staying with uh, Edo State, we must tell you that uh, the Edo Sports Festival has come and gone. Ikoba Oka, local government area, amassed a total of 240 medals to emerge champions. And Onwa West came second, close second, with uh, uh, 74 gold medals. You can see that uh, uh, Onwa West is doing very well, coming second. Why third place? Uh, Ego local government with uh, Ego local government came third with 64 gold medals. And at the end of the day, the deputy governor commended all the 18 local governments for being uh, uh, for uh, participating actively, Honorable Philip Shaibu, and he said that is a clear indication that when the National Sports Festival takes place in Benin next month, Edo will be ready to win at home. Well, we'll just see what happens, but the good thing is that facilities-wise, logistics-wise, Edo appears to be ready. Oluchi. 
Yes, I must commend um, the deputy governor. Uh, you know, he's been on top of his game, especially in terms of sports. And um, uh, they, do, they, do, they don't want the state to only be uh, okay in terms of facilities. They also want to make sure that, you know, the athletes at the end of the day uh, make Edo State proud. And they've been able to do that, you know, uh, just um, finishing the state um, sports festival. And we hope that when they meet other states, uh, when the real uh, dispersing, uh, festival itself commences, they will not jitter and they will be able to make the state proud. Apart from uh, the sports festival, uh, the deputy governor is just everywhere. You know, uh, some days back he was also with um, Edo Queens, you know, looking at their screening. I told you the last time that Roland Sinodi, the former GM of Crown FC, is now, yes, in, now charge in charge of um, Edo Queens. And the mandate there is that um, this new season that is commencing in March uh, 18th, you must win something. Either the league, you know, or the Aito Cup. And Rolandson is doing everything possible to make sure that he brings his wealth of experience, you know, uh, in to football yeah, exactly. and to make sure that the girls come out good. Oh, well, I do, doing very well in sports. I must say that one thing I want to say is we must give kudos to Governor Baseki, to his deputy, Philip Shaibu, and uh, our own Dudu Rume because they have not allowed the politics to distract them. Despite all the distractions they are getting on the political front, they have remained focused, and sports has not suffered in that stage, Tony. So that's uh, why when you are doing things, um, irrespective of uh, party affiliations, you know, you bring in thorough professionals, and that, that has really showed you know, that Governor Baseki, you know, like they say literally, you know, watch his eyes, you know, before appointing these people. Why the politics, whether good or bad, is ongoing. But then the core professionals, they face their works, and of course they've been turning in results after results. Kudos to Governor, you know, for seeing clearly in these appointments. All right, from a do state now, let's uh, talk uh, national, where our wrestlers did very well in all jazz, and uh, our own Odwaya Odukuroye is now world number one. And uh, I must tell you that uh, she has equally been adopted by Halogen Company. So at the end of the day, things are looking good for her, but she says she wants to go outside the country to go and train because remaining at home will not be good for her. But the dollars are beginning to roll in. So who says that Odwaya will not be able to go out? We caught up with them when they came back from Algeria where they did very well in the African Championship ahead of the Olympics. Let's hear them speak. And mind you, Sportsville was the only person that were there when they arrived from uh, Turkey because they had so many delays. Other journalists gave up, but we laid Siege, like they say, quote unquote, at the Montana Mohammed International Airport. And my producer was able to catch up with them. Let's hear them speak when they return to Nigeria. One other thing that I think can really help me in this Olympic uh, is for me to train outside Nigeria. We have training camps outside Nigeria. You have different hands to train with. And um, I still need to go to like three to four competitions uh, before the Olympics. It's a very huge achievement for me. I pray a lot. That's my prayer. Just to qualify for the Olympics so that I can be able to face the Olympic proper. For now, we just have a, a three weeks plus to go for the um, competition, so I don't think we will have to go for any more tournament before the competition. So it's just for a few days camping and make sure we train morning and evening for the competition. I can assure Nigerians, I can assure Nigerians that we are going to qualify, especially in the female team. We're going to qualify the five remaining uh, girls. Uh, this African Championship is an eye opener. We have seen our mistakes, and we'll go back home and correct our mistakes. And I think it's uh, a continued process. We have been training, we will not stop training, and we will try and correct all our mistakes, especially from the ones we made uh, from this uh, African uh, Championship in Nigeria. So I can assure you by next month, we're going to storm Morocco and we're going to get all our girls qualified and our boys too. All right, we say congratulations to our wrestlers. They are warming up another outing in Morocco where we know very well that they are going to excel. Where Nigeria will pick up more tickets, talk about Tokyo 2020. And then let's talk athletics now. You know Nigerian athletes, they burn the tracks in Akure, Federal University of Technology Akure last week and the Minister of Sports 
Sunday diary was full of praise for Alamide George and Co., the president of AFN, for doing a thorough job. And uh, the minister was represented by our own JJ, John Joshua Akonji. He was there and he said that number one priority for them is the welfare of athletes ahead of the Olympics. Let's hear my producer, Tayo Gosheye. Like I told you, he's everywhere. He was in Akure and uh, he caught up with both JJ and uh, the AFN president. Let's hear them speak after that event in Akure. Very exciting, very interesting, and a new dawn for athletics in Nigeria. The fact that there has been uh, a lot of uh, talks and distractions about crisis and all that. This is a sunshine for athletics, interestingly, in a sunshine state. And I imagine that it's a new dawn. It's the beginning of a new thing for athletics in Nigeria. The fact that the Honorable Minister has made it abundantly clear that his interest is in the welfare of the athletes, is to ensure that only the best is good for Nigeria. And wherever athletics is, wherever athletes are, their interest is optimally guaranteed. I believe that this is the beginning of a new thing and it's only going to get better. Leadership is character. Leadership is influence. Leadership involves transformation and ambitionary. And because we are transparent enough to our board members and the athletes see themselves as part of the process, we run an open door policy and we keep telling them room enough for all. This is one big family that we must carry everybody along in this process. And they believe in our process. They believe in this leadership. All right. So that was JJ, our own JJ, John Joshua Kunji. He is now the SC uh, media to the Minister of Sports, speaking to us exclusively at the Nakure. But why we are doing well in all other sports? One sport where we, ne we may not be competing is in boxing. Nigerian boxers have been decamped. They are not going to Dakar, Senegal for the African qualifiers. What that means is that the door has been closed to our boxers. Quite unfortunate, I must tell you. Well, maybe the ministry and Nigeria Olympic Committee may have felt that our boxer stands no chance. But I know that uh, even in Rio, where we did not do well, Ajagba was fantastic. He was only robbed. And the exposure that Ajagba got eventually saw him hit Canada, and today he is flourishing. So who says that Nigerian boxers will not have been given the opportunity to be in Dakar, Tony? Yeah, John, like you said, it's really, it's, uh, really very, very unfortunate that, um, you know, boxing... Uh, a famous uh, sport that brought us a lot of uh, fame and fortune, you know, in Nigerian international competitions is the one that is suffering, you know, this humiliation. And uh, I think it's a good one. You know, at the end, perhaps they will just go in and do some other things and bring back boxing, you know, to, you know, to the fore. But I do know that uh, the essence of uh, stopping them is that uh, so many administrators have looked truly into boxing to see that perhaps boxing will not uh, really get anything for us. What they are doing, like uh, the sports ministry and the Nigeria Olympic Committee, is that they met and agreed, you know, that uh, there will be no more jamboree. JJ emphasized that when he represented the minister, you know, in Akure. And I think uh, they have looked through, you've mentioned uh, wrestling, you've mentioned athletics. We are not just going with too many sports. We are going with sports that when we go, Nigerians will be very, very proud and, of course, even Sunday, that the minister will come back walking with his nose in front that these sports actually got us to the podium, you know, at the Olympics in Tokyo. Okay, well, uh, Nigerian boxers, what that means is that for those who are in charge of boxing, it is time for you to go back to the drawing board and see how we can revive boxing. Like Tony said, I know that Nigeria has produced so many world-class uh, boxers. Uh, don't forget that the... Uh, Peter Kunyegwachi way back in 19... Uh, no, Jim Mayegun way back in 1964 won us Olympic bronze medal. Peter Kunyegwachi won us a bronze. So why is it that boxing has gone down in Nigeria? We need to re-examine what has happened. Well, that's top news. Let's take a break. When we we'll come back, we'll go to part two of the show. We'll be talking about the uh, Nigerian Professional Football League after this break. <laughs> 